Hey, what's up everybody? John from Old Reading Farm here. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, my sawmill is completely broken. No, just kidding. It's not. But what has happened is, you know, we are trying to use this to build a barn for our alpacas down here. And the spot that we had selected to put this in a more permanent basis is not ready. So we decided to temporarily put it here. And so it has some less permanent footings and I don't have anything long enough to make it go all the entire run. And there's a ton of little feet. So it's really hard to get it level. And now I was able to get it level, but then after, you know, 20, 30 logs being on there and running it for five hours, it has now become unlevel. And there's also some of the log bunks, the big green things right here, that's where the logs sit. Some of them are a little bit unlevel. So you can see, so you can see I have a string line there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the saw head, which is where the actual, you know, blade is. And I'm gonna try to re-level the base. And now I'm realizing that I forgot to get my big six foot level. So I'm gonna have to run back upstairs and grab it. But, so basically I need to re-level this thing, unscrew some of the bolts, re-screw them together. It's not gonna be a lot of fun, but I need to get it in order to cut it, to cut wood well. And so I'll show you in a second why that's important. So these right here were a couple of the last pieces that I milled. And it's a little bit hard to see on this one, but it's a little skinny in the middle and then it gets wider at the end. And so this guy, so this was supposed to be a two by four and you can see it's quite bowed, but it's also really, it's much thicker in the middle than it is on the ends. And that's because when I cut it, you know, it was sitting like this and the board was bowed up that way. And so it cut it fatter in the middle than on the ends. So some of that could be due to the wood. And I've noticed that I have gotten some bowing in some of the boards that I've cut and I've done some research and it looks like, you know, sometimes the trees just release tension and, you know, some of the, the wood that I've cut, the logs that I've had are not as straight as they look. They end up having a little cant or a little curve to them. And then apparently that just sometimes happens. But also I was looking at it and so I have a string line on my bunks there. And so I was measuring the space in between the string line and the bunks and they do change. Um, so that could also be affecting it. So I just want to take some time and really look at it and see if I can get this all set up good and well so that I can keep cutting. Cause if I keep getting these weird angles, it's just not going to end up right in the end. And I need the wood to be as, you know, equivalent as possible. If I get a two by four, that's, you know, a quarter of an inch thicker than the other one that's not really gonna be great for the siding. It's gonna stick out a little bit. So I wanna to try to get these as consistent as possible. Let's get to work. So I've actually decided to leave the saw head on just because I'm by myself and I think it'll actually be better to have some weight on it, keep this uh, down. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to attach some boards to our wooden feet. So right now I have three sections of feet. I have some, I have a section right here at the end, one right in the middle, and then one at the beginning. And that's just because that's sort of what I had to do because that's what I had available. And I can't cut something long enough to have, you know, one single continuous rail on either side. The problem with that is if I put a log down or, you know, I'm rolling the log over, it could shift the feet um, and it could shift them individually. So what I'm going to do is if I connect them all with boards, they're much, they're going to be much less prone to shifting on their own or at least that's the hope anyway. So I need to go get my big long level and my screws and then I'll be back. Okay. So I'm down here, I just cleaned all the sawdust out of the rails. So I think what I'm actually gonna do for the first, for the first step <clears throat> is I'm gonna try to level out these legs. So I have these big eight by eights on the ground that then hold up the four by fours. 
So like this middle section of four by four, or at least the, the, the feet are perfectly level. And then these ones are also perfectly level, but they're lower than over here. So I think what I'm gonna do is set these up, try to get all the feet level on this side uh, with like shims and stuff like that. And then I will uh, screw on some boards to make sure that all stays the same. Then I'll go to the other side and then I will both level that long ways and sideways so that it's level to this side. Because the, the problem is there's like, let's see, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 18 little adjustable feet on this thing. And so to try to level this whole thing out using those feet is gonna take a very long time. So what I'm gonna do is try to level out the whole thing first, which is what I, I believe I did in the beginning, but you know, since we've been putting big heavy logs on there, it's been shifting around a bit, but I think we should be pretty safe now. So I'm gonna to try to level out the feet and go from there. And again, I decided to leave the saw head on there, which should be fine, because if I need to lift on this side, I can do it from over here and then move the saw head as needed, which will also help me check level as I go. <sighs> Let's go. Okay, so here's what I've done. I have loosened all of the feet on this side of the uh, rails. So I just had an adjustable wrench. I used my uh, impact driver to just take out the jam nuts, which are on the top, uh, which makes a big difference. If you watched my first video putting this thing together, it was a nightmare. That actually made it much easier. Um, and so I made them all equal distance. So there's a nut at the bottom of the foot that holds the bolt to the foot itself. So I made them all um, the same distance, which this is like about an inch. And so the reason why I did that is because now I know that that, um, where the rail is sitting should be um, level to itself. It's not gonna be parallel to the rails, but it'll be level to itself. Uh, you know, I don't have one side that's gonna be two inches and one side that's gonna be an inch creating an incline. At least I have a consistent measurement there. So I was thinking that I would be able to just do that one side, um, but since I have the other side all set up too, I'll have to redo that so that everything is the same. Now it's gonna change the pitch of how it's sitting, but I really need to start with everything as consistent as possible. So I'm just gonna go through and do the same thing I just did to the other side, and then it'll be time to start adjusting the feet, or the, the feet of the platform. Oh, let's get going. All right, so it's now later in the day, I've come back, and I was able to mostly level the platform. I found that I couldn't really level it with everything on top, but I'm not gonna take everything off, so I did the best I could. It should be serviceable now, um, and so now I can just use the individual leveling feet in order to finish the level. So it should be, for the most part, pretty good, uh, and then I can fine tune it with the feet. You know, my problem comes, so what I did was I took some scraps that I had and just shimmed underneath the rails to raise these up, because what I found was a lot of the feet were just kind of hanging out in the air, um, which means there's it's obviously not level, there's no weight on it, uh, but everything should, be much, everything should be much better now, so I'm gonna uh, snug up the bolts uh, connecting the rails, and then I'm gonna see if I can square it, and then <laughs> put it all together. Whew! What an annoying process. Should have done this from the beginning. All right, let's go. All right, so that was an intensely long and arduous process, uh, but having the six foot level made a huge difference because I could put it at every point and know how each leg 
on the other side was going to affect it. And so now everything is level, all the feet are touching the wood. So the last couple things that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to screw in some of the feet to the wood and then I'm gonna put the little wood connectors to the little rails to hopefully make sure that they don't move anywhere. So let's actually do a quick test. So I'm gonna push the saw head gently and see if it glides smoothly all the way across. So there we go, not much. Didn't put very much oomph in there. But so it stopped, but it's not rolling back, so that's good. And so I'm just gonna put like the tiniest amount of pressure on here. Yeah, that feels good. There's a little bump right there, but I think once I snug those bolts up, it'll be fine. And there we gave it a little bit more va va boom. And there it goes. Interesting. So it seems as if the entire thing is kind of slanted back towards me, if only minutely, because if I just do a little bit like this, it's going to go all the way back. But you guys didn't... Uh, you know, it's definitely tilted that way. As evidenced by that. Which, I mean, I guess that's not that big of a deal, because it's only a little bit, but better than having a big swoop. So actually now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test my string line, I'm going to measure it along each bunk and hopefully it's all even and then I can just uh, light this whole thing on fire and light myself on fire and then we'll be done, right? That sounds good. Thanks. Be right back. Alright, so essentially the string line is resting right on top of that 2x4, never mind the jankiness of this little jig. So the string is approximately an inch and a half above that bunk. So if I check the string line right here and if it focuses you can see right on one and a half same thing on this one right on one and a half oops right on one and a half and then this is where it goes a little hanky so now actually focus that one is also right on one and a half, but maybe a little bit higher. But then this guy, this guy is at basically an eighth of an inch higher. So a quick test would confirm that that's actually due to the jankiness of my jig, so we should be all good. It is late. Um, I'm supposed to be cooking dinner, so I'm going to quick screw this all together. Oh. <sighs> And maybe take a nap. How's that sound? That sounds good, right? All right, so I'm gonna screw this all together and then I'm gonna hope and pray that it works. And then maybe tomorrow, I'll come back and actually cut a log. But you know, this was a really intense process and it took super long to do. Having the six foot level made a huge difference. Um, but it's still such a time consuming process. I'm really not looking forward to doing this at our new location. Maybe I won't even have the legs. Maybe I'll just take the legs off and just bolt it directly to some wood and level it that way. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna screw this together and then I'm gonna go. So I will check back in with you tomorrow. All right, hang in there. All right, so we are back at it today. Beautiful day outside, which is nice. Um, and everything seems good with the sawmill, so I am going to grab a new log, put it on there, saw it, and see if I can get some straight lengths. Hopefully I can. Wish me luck. Also I took the tarp off of our hay to give it some sun because it had gotten a little wet. And there are all the alpacas eating it. That's supposed to be for later. Alpacas. All right, here we go.
All right, so I don't know if you can see it, but this guy bows up pretty good right there, so this will be a perfect test. So first thing I'm gonna do is make a nice flat cut right, atop, right across the top and then flip it over and then make one more nice flat cut and uh, we'll see what happens because it could, it could also be the wood that I'm getting and you know, this guy is pretty bowed so you know, I think I can expect some bowing from this piece but maybe I'll see if I can try to get like a 4x4 four four out of it or something thick. Uh, we shall see. Wish me luck! Notice when I did my last measurement is one side was thicker than the other which meant that uh, I was cutting at an angle so then what I did was I flipped the cant over until I figured out uh, which way was horns up meaning that the two ends or one end was sticking up higher than the other um, and I had just cut a flat side on one of them so then I flipped it over onto the flat side that I just cut so that the log is touching all of the bunks and it's nice and level. And I cut a very small sliver off. And now you can see in that small sliver, see this right here? I mean, that's like an eighth of an inch maybe. And then over here, it's like a quarter of an inch. So I have now rectified that problem. So I think you know, maybe part of the problem was this not being level, plus uh, bowed logs, plus me not really paying attention to it. You know, what I found here is that sawmilling is really more of an art than a science. You have to sort of predict what the wood is gonna do. And if you have like a bowed piece of wood, just expect it to bow. And you just gotta keep an eye on it, keep measuring, keep looking at it, and then you'll get it. So I, I seem to have a, a nice cant now that's six inches by five and seven eighths. So now I'm just gonna figure out what kind of pieces of wood I can get out of there. So if I do my two by fours, I can get, let's see, oh God, math. So I basically have two by sixes, which I think I need. So now that I have this, I have this set up and this is all flat. So I'm gonna cut some two by sixes. So I'm just gonna, yeah, cut inch and three quarters uh, for my two by six. And then I think I'll be able to get three. Because I made some little notations here. So if I have an inch and three quarters, which is gonna be my two by four, I know that two of them is gonna be three and a half inches. Three of them is gonna be five and a quarter. So including some of the, uh, the blade kerf in there, I think I can get three two by sixes out of this, which would be pretty cool. Uh, so let's see if I can do that. So, really frustrating, but can't really see it here, so it should be fine. So it's a little thinner on this end, and it gets thicker towards the middle and at the end, though it's actually not that much, maybe an eighth of an inch. But what I noticed is my log, my cant, started flat, but now you can see there's a little gap there, and there's a gap there. And that's going to be my difference right there. So you can see, so the, the cant even just sitting here started to bow this way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over on this side because I just cut that. 
and then cut another two by four and then maybe I'll flip it over again and see if that makes a difference. All right, so I gotta admit that I am kind of frustrated. And I, I guess it really is just the wood because I paid really close attention and it, you know, it would seesaw and then it would cup and then it would do all this sorts of stuff. So like this last plank that I cut here, supposed to be an inch and three quarters thick all the way around. And it's like an inch and five eighths on one end. And then in the middle, it's an inch and seven eighths. And on the end, it's an inch and three quarters. And the inch and three quarters is the first cut. So this, so let's see. So if that was the case, and it's, it's really, it's just gotta be the wood because the wood keeps moving on me. And it's just frustrating because I just want it to be right. You know what I mean? And I just spent all this time leveling it out and I double checked it so it's, I know it's not the base. It's gotta be the wood. And so I'm like a quarter of an inch off, which again is frustrating, but I think it'll be just fine for what we're doing. We're just building a barn. Doesn't need to be perfect. So I think that's gonna do it for this video. And I really think if I paid closer attention, I could have probably avoided this. And like, you know, if I flipped it and made sure that the log was touching all the bunks, I'm a little impatient at this point. So anyway, thank you guys very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Please give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If there's something that I can do better, please tell me. I'm dying for your opinion. And I mean that honestly, not sarcastically. Also, please consider subscribing. We're close to 6,000 subscribers, which is super exciting. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later. It was supposed to be a two by four. Woo! Here, oh, it's really hard to say where these things are. So the... <laughs>